Now, in 2006, Joyce Carol Vincent, a young single woman, was found dead in a bedsit in London. She was lying on her couch, the television was on, there were half-wrapped Christmas presents nearby. Then it emerged that her body had lain there, undisturbed, for three years. Tonight, a film about Joyce, Dreams of a Life, has its premiere. Part documentary, part imagined reconstruction. It's the work of director Carol Morley. Five years ago, the skeletal remains of a 38-year-old woman were found in a bedsit in northwest London. She'd been dead for three years, yet no one, friends, family, the authorities, had known. The discovery briefly hit the headlines, prompting desultory soul-searching about how a society could have neglected someone so badly. Then the story was forgotten. But the filmmaker, Carol Morley, couldn't forget it. That headline itself was just so strong. And then the story that went with it was very anonymous. I mean, there was no photograph of Joyce. So she was sort of a very mysterious and eg enigmatic figure in that article. And then a couple of days later, there was stuff on the internet, like must have been one miserable cow, deserved the domestic abuse, stuff like that. And I thought, is this her legacy that she becomes kind of urban myth? Once I'd read the article, I really felt I wasn't so much interested in how Joyce had died, which the, the chief pathologist had never discovered, but in how she had lived. The remains of Joyce Carol Vincent were so badly decayed, a cause of death could not be established. Carol Morley set about trying to find out just who Joyce was. She appealed for information, but the friends she interviewed often found it hard to understand how the woman they thought they knew had lost contact with them. And it just seemed remarkable, given all the information that we had about Joyce, although it was quite limited, it just seemed strange and highly unusual that there was no one there for her. It's just tragic, you know, and the fact that she was, she was left all alone. In life, Joyce had been a glamorous figure. She earned good money at a city firm. Men fell at her feet, and one ex-boyfriend said she dated a baronet and an MP. She rubbed shoulders with stars like Stevie Wonder and had herself been compared to Whitney Houston. I think it is a story of aspiration. I think it's a, a story of somebody who wanted a lot out of life and I think that sometimes we don't always get that. And I think, you know, she was an incredibly proud person and I think my personal take on it is that she, you know, was in a situation she possibly didn't want people to know she was in. Before moving to the bedsit where she died, Joyce had been in a refuge for victims of domestic violence. She hadn't seen her four sisters for years, and the friends who fell out of touch with her feel guilty there was no one there for her. When her remains were discovered, the TV was still on. The flickering images of entertainment that reach out, a lot of isolated and lonely people watch the television to, to feel like they're connecting to the world. So I did find it an incredibly poignant image. Carol Morley hopes the film will make people think a little more about the value of community the importance of looking out for the lonely. So many people have said, I left the cinema, I phoned somebody up. And, and there's been also some people that have said, I think I'm a bit like Joyce and I'm actually going to let people know a bit more about my life. When Joyce died, she was surrounded by Christmas presents, wrapped and ready to share. Yet even those who would have received them didn't notice her absence. Carol Morley speaking to me earlier.